Hey guys, in the previous video I gave you a quick overview of the updates that were done in the Anycubic Photon Slicer version 1.3.6. If you want to learn more about those changes, please watch the previous video using the link below. Um, I also showed you how to download and install the Cheetobox application. And in this video, I'll focus on how you can use the Cheetobox application to streamline your 3D printing workflow. If you've downloaded Digitbox, please go ahead and launch the application. And we're gonna use the T-Rex 3D model that's provided by Microsoft. Uh, so you just gotta drag and drop that STL file in the Cheetobox application. And a really nice thing here that you'll notice is that uh, if you've ever used Simplify 3D, you have this nice gimbal that allows you to uh, rotate your 3D body. Uh, again, those of you who have used Simplify 3D will be very familiar with this. Uh, now, when it comes time to actually scale your model, uh, you don't have to actually go ahead and struggle here. There's a very nice function in Cheetobox that allows you to just scale the model to fit. And if you click that little Yu-Gi-Oh icon on the top right corner of the workspace, it'll actually change your workspace perspective so you can perfectly uh, verify that things are gonna fit in your 3D printing uh, workspace. So if you switch back over to the uh, rotate menu here, uh, there's a really nice function. Uh, I think those of you, again, who have used Simplify 3D are going to like this. It allows you to essentially pick a face on your 3D model and tell Cheetobox to uh, place your model flat on the bed based off the orientation of that face. So this is nice for models, non-mechanical models um, that don't have flat faces and uh, you know it saves you a lot of time in terms of taking out the guesswork uh, to rotate and, and place your 3D model. Now uh, there are other things that come in hand when using uh, SLA 3D printers to print your parts. You're going to need to hollow your parts in most cases just because SLA 3D printing uses a lot of material. So in Cheetobox, you can just click the hollow function here, choose your wall thickness, and you can see it's going to uh, hollow the 3D model for you. Again, in a few mouse clicks. I really like this portion here because normally in my workflow I would have exported my 3D model to Mesh Mixer and uh, had to hollow the model and export it again, save it again, and reload it into uh, Simplify 3D or in this case Cheetobox. But you don't even have to do that here. It's all in one software and I did it in just a few seconds. So it also has this really nice slider here. So you can actually go ahead and slide the slider, see through the model in X-ray mode, in case you want to verify that the hollow function actually did its job properly, especially on detailed models, right? Now, um, after you hollow your model, obviously you don't want the resin to get trapped into uh, within your model when you're printing. Uh, so how do you drill a hole here? Again, Cheetobox made it really easy. You just click the hole, function, uh, specify the hole diameter and shape and click on add hole and just click somewhere on your model to basically cut out um, a hole on that particular portion of the model. So you can see that little green indicator there. It cut out a little circle piece and place that piece on the bed. So in this case, when your model is done printing, the resin drill uh, uh, drips out of that hole so you don't actually have to uh, try to clean out the inside of your model and if you want to patch the model later You could just take that little piece stick it back into the hole and maybe glue it back in there and save yourself a lot of time uh, without having to sand too much and uh, You know, maybe ruin your your nice 3d model So the guys that at Cheetobox really thought about this and I like that now when it comes to supports if you recall I mentioned in the previous video that uh, I would do a comparison here with the Anycubic Photon Slicer and you will recognize the menu here in Cheetobox looks very similar to the support menu in the uh, Anycubic Photon Slicer but they're not exactly the same so if you see here I'm generating supports and I can customize the support density and uh, customize the support settings for top, middle, bottom and raft but uh, when it comes time to actually uh, edit anything in the support structure, that's where the difference, you'll notice the differences here in Cheetobox and the 80 cubic photon slicer. For example, I'm going to go ahead and uh, edit the support structure that you're looking at 
uh, right now and you'll see that in the Anycubic Photon Slicer normally if you perform this function you would have to uh, guess what you're clicking on you don't really know what you're moving what support structure you're moving and you literally have to choose every support segment so it's not really intuitive here in Chitterbox what I just do is you just click on edit uh, support and you can very clearly see the red piece of the support that you're choosing in the workspace hold and drag your mouse to just reposition and edit the support structure and it's super easy to use um, if you're trying to delete supports again very easy in the anycubic photon slicer you have to choose every single segment that you want to delete uh, that, that's part of the support tree so it just wastes a lot of time here in Chitterbox, you just choose the support tree or you could choose just one segment at a time and hit the delete button and it's that easy Okay. So uh, to add supports in the Anycubic Photon Slicer, uh, actually you can add individual support uh, pegs, but if you add whole tree segments like I just did here, it's pretty much impossible. You can't do that. Uh, Cheetah Box definitely allows you more control over your support structures and uh, just makes your life a lot easier. Uh, one other thing I liked about the support structures in Chisu Box is the ability to change the contact geometry. So you can see I changed the edge of the supports to a sphere and it just makes it easier for you to remove your support structure down the line if you're working on a model that's high detailed and you don't want to leave too many sharp uh, support remnants there. Uh, so again, the regular support structure just looks like the one in the Anycubic Photon, so there's really not much difference there. Now, when it comes down to slicing the model, uh, you can very quickly edit the default settings, but if you have an out-of-the-box SLA printer like the Anycubic Photon or the Photon S or even the Illegal Mars 3D printer, just choose it from the list here and the pre-configured settings for your printer. In my case, I'm just going to choose the resin uh, type, the print height. I'm going to change the light on and off state for the bottom uh, settings. And also there's a nice infill setting here that the Anycubic Photon Slicer does not have. Uh, here you can choose the infill density and it basically creates a similar infill as what you would see on an FDM printer. Anti-aliasing is not available on the Photon uh, yet, at least that update is coming. Now, once you've set everything nice, uh, you could go ahead and click the slice function here. Uh, you could choose whether or not you want to slice just the model or just slice everything that's on your build plate, which is very nice. And you can also save your settings. Another thing here is that when the slicing is completed, you'll be able to get a side-by-side -side view, both in 3D and 2D, so you can really clearly see uh, what your printer is about to print. So you will see what I mean in a few seconds. There you go that easy right so we have the print time and print estimates on the right you have that slider that allows you to see both in 2d and 3d the infill geometry the support geometry and you can even rotate that 3d view to get, get a um, uh, a better view of what is actually being printed so you can see that 3d infill there the guys at uh, the cheetah box uh, told me that they're essentially going to come up with a uh, varied set of infill settings so right now you only have a 2d grid and fill type thing uh, but it would really be nice to see if a, a true 3d infill geometry is actually going to be created later so i'm i'm waiting to see uh, one that's coming out and hopefully maybe in the professional version of g2 box uh, last here there is a really nice function that I missed from the Anycubic Photon Slicer. So Cheetah Box here allows you to save this as a project, which is really nice because uh, if you have to change anything in this support structure here, in Anycubic Photon Slicer, you have to basically reload your model and reconfigure everything from scratch. Here in Cheetah Box, it's super nice because I can save this as a project and then just reload it and just edit just the one piece of the project that I want. So I've made a quick list uh, comparing the Anycubic Photon Slicer and the Cheetah Box uh, 1.4 Slicer that I've been reviewing here. And here's a nice table. There's a little blog article that I wrote that I put the link in the description below. So again, if you like these kind of video guys, please subscribe. And I really would like to have your feedback to know what other type of topics you would like to discuss. So thanks again for watching guys and have a great weekend.